أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أتمان الأكملان على محمد الرسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته واهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد حياكم الله Dear brothers to this uh, talk today Thursday the first Thursday in, uh, the second Thursday in Ramadan Thursday the 8th of Ramadan 1439 of the Hijra calendar corresponding the 25th Twenty-fourth, twenty-fourth of May, two thousand eighteen, of the Gregorian calendar, and uh, we meet today in this blessed masjid, Masjid Makki, in Manchester. Uh, this masjid, which witnessed uh, many Ramadans and the people in it, alhamdulillah, are doing fine with this blessed month. We're going to talk today about uh, six articles related to the month of Ramadan. The first is fasting. Second is night prayer. Third is recitation of Quran. Fourth is uh, sadaqah. Fifth is dhikr uh, and dua. And the sixth is family. Fasting, Ramadan is known for fasting. As Allah Ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah in the ayah 184, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسرى وما ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكبروا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah clarified that the month of Ramadan is the month of fast. In the ayah pre to this, ayah 183, Allah ta'ala said, Ya ayu al-ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum siyam. Kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'annakum jattakum. All you who believe, it is made obligatory upon you to fast as it was made obligatory upon those who, before you, who were before you to fast, so that you may be pious. Allah Ta'ala says, oh, you who believe, so you have to pay attention. As Ibn Mas'ud said, whenever you hear Allah saying, Ya ladina amanu, then listen carefully, as it is either something good that you are uh, directed to, or something evil that you are warned against. And in this ayah, Allah Ta'ala is dragging your attention to direct you today to one of the, of the best uh, deeds of Islam. How not, and it is the worship that distance you from the fire 70 days for each day, 70 years for each day, as in the hadith. It is the worship that Allah Ta'ala assigned the gate of the eight gates of the Jannah only for people who fulfill this worship, called Babu Rayyan. It is a worship in which the reward is not determined. 
as in the hadith, كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به. All the deeds of mankind is determined, meaning in reward for him. Except for fast, it is for me, and I'm the one who rewards for it. And then Allah Ta'ala clarified that saying, يَدَعُ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ وَشَهْوَتَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي He abandoned his food, drink, uh, sexual desire, only for me. Sincerity. Sincerity is very important. Ramadan is the month of uh, the Quran being descended. And that's why Allah Ta'ala says, Shahr Ramadan, الذي أنزل في القرآن. Allah did not say شهر رمضان الذي فرض في الصيام. ما didn't say the month of Ramadan in which fast was fasting was made obligatory. لا. Allah تعالى said شهر رمضان الذي أنزل في القرآن. هدى للناس وهدى وهدى الفرقان. فمن شهد منكم الشهر بريسه. So it is the month in which Quran was revealed. That's why Allah Ta'ala made it a blessed month and made fasting obligatory in it. Why? Because fasting is the main, the main way of purifying your soul. Fasting is the main way of purifying your soul. As in the hadith, the Prophet said, Inna ash-shaytan yajiru al-adam majradam. Indeed, shaytan runs in the body of a human being where the blood runs, the veins. And you, when you are fasting, your heart bumps less blood into the veins. So the veins shrinks, get tight and small, to build up the pressure. Because if the, if the blood is less in quantity and the vein remain the same diameter, the pressure drops and you'll be in trouble. So, the veins shrink to build up pressure for this blood. When it shrinks, the shaitan cannot run. The shaitan cannot run. And that's why when the Sahabi asked the Prophet ﷺ to tell him about a deed that if he does, will take him to Jannah. He said, عَلَيْكَ بِالصَّوْمْ لَا مِثْلَ لَهُمْ Go for fasting. There is no any other worship like it. No any other worship that can be like fasting. And also fasting and uh, main aspect of it is to abandon food and drink and sexual desire. Which creation which is created not to eat, not to drink, and not to have sexual desire. Which creation? Angels. The angels, isn't it? And the angels are creation of purity. They never ever commit sin. Never. They never disobey Allah in what He commands them to. And they only do what He commands them to. So when you are fasting, you have kind of similarity with the angels. And that's why you find yourself uh, going forth towards all sort of obediences. When you are fasting, you love to come to the masjid. But maybe rest of the year, Hardly you could come to the masjid. 
When you are fasting, you love to recite the Quran and read the Quran. Rest of the year, you are busy with the WhatsApp and newspaper and social media, other media, and rarely you see the Quran. When you are fasting, you love dua. Well, rest of the year, you rarely make dua. And you ask others, please make dua for me. In Ramadan, you make dua for yourself and for others. In Ramadan, you find yourself uh, busy with dhikr all the time. Rest of the year, you may be singing, you may be talking, whatever, but not uh, getting involved with the dhikr. And that's why, ikhwa, fasting does not in any day of the year. If you are fasting, it does that. It makes your heart incline towards the taqwa, towards piety. But in Ramadan more. Why? Because everybody around you is fasting. Second thing, or first thing, before you start fasting, Allah prepared the climate for you. Before you start fasting. The shayateen are changed from the time the moon of Ramadan is sighted or the, the announcement is made for uh, first night of Ramadan. Just by that moment, before you have done anything of the activities of Ramadan, Allah lock up the shayateen for you. So you be free for serving him. Now you have no excuse. Those who don't fast in Ramadan without any valid reason, those who don't read the Quran, those who don't make dua, dhikr, those who don't be in the masjid, they have no excuse. They have no excuse. Because Allah free to them doing these things, he has changed shayateen for them. Before they started fasting or even night uh, prayer to Taraweeh, before they started doing Taraweeh, Allah changed the shayateen away. That's why Taraweeh, we do Taraweeh in the yani our first night, in the last day of Shaban. We don't wait to fast so we make Taraweeh. No, we do Taraweeh before we fast. And because Taraweeh is from Ramadan, because it's not Sunnah to gather in the masjid for night prayer and congregation uh, yani regularly in the year. But in Ramadan it is Sunnah. It is the best Sunnah. It is the best Sunnah. So Allah Ta'ala prepared the climate for the Muslims. And He tightened up all those shayateen. All those shayateen of jinn, not mankind. Shayateen of mankind are released. Shayateen of jinn, which Allah Ta'ala said about them, Alam tara anna arsanna shayateen ala al-kafirin ta'uzzum azza. Have you not seen us sending the shayateen towards the kuffar so they push them to do the wrong and to oppress the believers. And that's why in Ramadan, yes, we still see some, uh, some oppression, some aggression, some problems, but it is lesser than outside Ramadan. Even from the kuffar, it's lesser. Why? Because the shayateen are changed, the motivators are changed. So it's your chance now, when, when it is in Ramadan, to fast, but you need to have the fiqh of fasting. And that's why the Prophet said in the hadith, مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَ بِأَنْ يَدَعْ طَعَامَهُ شَرَابًا He, whoever, 
does not abandon false speech and false actions, then Allah is not in need for him to abandon his food and drink. It does not mean you go and eat and drink, no. But it means your fasting has no value. Has no value. You are making yourself hungry and thirsty. Huh? For nothing. For nothing. No reward for that. That's why we need to protect our fasting. The, the pious predecessors used once Ramadan comes, they enter the, the masajid and they don't leave them until Ramadan ends. And they say, we protect our fast. But the problem today, many people break the, damage their fast in the masjid. In the masjid. Like biting, surrendering, mocking, etc., etc. Wallahi akhwan. Some of them even watch wrong things on their mobile phone in the masjid. And I saw some of them in Masjid al Nabi doing that. And some, wallahi, I saw them listening to music, to song in Masjid al Nabi while the people are praying Taraweeh. In the last 10 nights. So for this person, same skin, you are not only losing the reward of Ramadan, but you are getting huge sins. Huge. You are getting the anger of Allah. That's why fasting is a great opportunity to clear your body of all the poisons that you have stored during the year by food. And it is before that and after that to clear your heart from all the poison of aqidah, poison of bid'ah, poison of akhlaq. That's how fasting need to do in our bodies. Naturally, fasting is doing the physical things, removing all the, the poisons out of your body that you have taken through food during the year. That's natural. But what doesn't come naturally is the spiritual poisons cannot go naturally. It goes intentionally. You intend to get rid of these poisons. As if you have yani, any, any practice of shirk during the year, now you have to stop not just for the month of Ramadan, la, but as a, a point of change or diversion to the to what is uh, good to tawheed and likewise with the bid'ah if you used to commit bid'ah now you have to divorce them and go back to the sunnah of Rasulullah if you used to commit sins whatever sin now you need to stop it and Use your mean that you used to use it in sins. Use it in good deeds. If you used to look to the haram, now focus in looking into the mushaf, into the Quran. If you used to use your ears in listening to music or uh, bad speech, now it is the time to change and just listen to the Quran. Remember, even Rasulullah used to know hearing the Quran. One day he said to Abdullah bin Mas'ud, read Quran for, for me. He said, I read Quran for you. And it was revealed to you. He said, read as I love to hear it from others. And Ibn Mas'ud started reciting Surah uh, Ali Imran. Up until he reached فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَىٰ هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا He saw Salaam said to him, حَسْبُكْ Stop. When he reached this ayah. Remember, when we bring from every nation a witness, and we bring you as a witness upon all those witnesses. He said to him, Stop. Ibn Mas'ud said, I raised my head, and I saw the Prophet صلى الله crying. Crying. Today in Ramadan, if you can't cry, you need to replace your eye. 
If you can't cry, you need to replace your eye. It's a dry eye. It's a dry eye. If it cannot tear. Today in Ramadan, when you are hungry, reading the Quran, finding where you were guilty, finding where you are doing shortcomings, then when you can cry, if you can't cry, if you can't cry today in Ramadan, then when you can cry, when? And when we say cry, we don't mean yani, uh, screaming. Uh, no, nah, cry, cry. Ibn Mas'ud was reciting the Quran beside the Prophet He didn't know that he's crying until he said to him, stop, and he raised his head and he saw him cry. Rasulullah did not used to do like many people today do. Oh, and, you know, disturb all those who are praying, disturb the Imam and his recitation. That's not good. We don't want to say that this is showing off. Maybe he is more sincere than me, but this is not the way. This is not the sunnah. Sincerity itself is not enough. You have to uh, yani, combine between sincerity and admitting the sunnah. As Allah Ta'ala said in Surah Al Imran, Ayah 31. Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, that is sincerity. Fattabi'uni, that is the sunnah. You have to join between them so that Allah loves you. يحببكم الله. So that Allah loves you. Nah. So Ramadan is the month of يعني, fasting, but we need to understand what is fasting. What is fasting? Fasting is not only to stop eating and drinking, drinking from dawn until sunset. Nah. Fasting is a way of humbling yourself, purifying your heart, your soul, cleaning up your thoughts from the evil thoughts, cleaning up your heart from hatred towards the Muslims. You need to forgive so Allah forgives you. You are now, as we said, in a position where you have a similarity with the malaika, the angels. So you need to be as, try to be as pious as them. Yes, we can't, because they are created for, to be like that. But we still, we need to struggle. Allah Ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُنَا And those who struggle for the cause of us, we will guide them our, to our ways. So we need to struggle. So this is fasting. Fasting, as we said, is not only to hold up eating, drinking, and sexual intercourse, but everything that drag you away from piety or, or makes, makes you go slow on the, uh, on the tracking of piety. You need to go fast. Didn't Allah Ta'ala say that? وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْبِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah said, come fast. Come fast towards a forgiveness of your Lord and a Jannah, which with, which with is as the width, the, the width of the heavens and the earth. And you, you, you are not told only to come fast. No. Because fast, maybe I go uh, 10 kilometers fast. The other can go 15 kilometers fast. The third can go faster or slower. But it's not only to go fast, that it's to compete, as Allah Ta'ala said, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ And in that, what is that? That, that trunk that Allah showed you. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْبِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ And speed up towards a forgiveness of your Lord and the Jannah. There you need to speed up to the limit that you raise everyone else. You come first. It's a competition. It's a marathon to the Jannah. 
So marathon to the Jannah. If you don't get prepared, get trained well to go into the marathon, you'll be the last and maybe you collapse and, uh, at the beginning. That's why you need to have long breath in, in, in the worship. The way you go on dunya, you need to go on the akhirah. You need to have long breath. You need to exercise. It is the time for exercise now. Rest of the year, Wallahi ya ikhwan, believe me. And me before you, we are very lazy in fasting. We are very lazy in night prayers. We are very stingy in giving out. We are very poor in doing righteous deeds. Now it is the station for you to get prepared and train yourself how to have good muscles to continue the journey on the same speed. <coughs> Not to come after Ramadan as a turtle, crawling. You need to be a rabbit all the time. Run until you reach, not until you get tired. La. Run until you reach. Why? Because when you get tired, Allah will give you the same reward as when you were strong and fast. As in the hadith. He who ever gets sick, then Allah Ta'ala will give him the reward as of the ibadah, as he used to do it when he was when he was healthy. So now we need to go. Now in Ramadan, Allah is multiplying the rewards of every worship. Look at that. One night in Ramadan, if you stand, stand up in it, doing nothing but ibadah, will equal in reward a worship of 1,000 months. Many of us may not live this as long as this night may not live. When you calculate it, 1,000 months equals 83 years and three months and three weeks, three days and three hours and three minutes and maybe three seconds. Say 83 years. How many of those, you know, relatives or friends died before they reach 83? How many of those who die Reaching 83, they are very little. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مِنَ السِّتِّينَ إِلَى السَّبْعِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مَنْ يَجُوزُ ذَلِكَ The age of my Ummah is from 60 to 70, and very rare who can go beyond that. Sheikh Albani, when he said this hadith, and he said, I am from those legend number of people. Because he died in 83. Like Uthman, he died in 90. Did he give birth? Huh? Did he give birth? 90 something, yeah. 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 So, how you guarantee you live all this life? Allah gives you the rewards of it, even if you live all this life. How you guarantee that you do all good in this age? How you guarantee? Now Allah Ta'ala says for one night, you're gonna get a reward of 1,000 months of worship. 1,000 months of worship. Look at that. That's why we need to understand the proper way of fasting. Proper way of fasting, as we said, Fasting is not only to stop eating and drinking and sexual intercourse, no. But it is to train yourself how to be a true slave of Allah. How to serve Allah the way He wants you to serve, to serve Him. We as men, Allah told us how to serve Him in a particular way. The women, Allah told them to serve him in a particular way. We cannot. We, fasting is not, fasting and prayer 
are not prohibited for us under whatsoever circumstance. I don't want to say we are uh, uh, يعني, permitted not to pray or not. La, la. Not prohibited. But women, it is prohibited for them to fast and pray when they are in menses. And if they do pray or fast, they're going to be punished. Because he doesn't want them to fast and pray in this situation. So Allah wants you as a man to worship him and serve him in this way. And he wants women to serve him in this way. Every one of us need to learn how to serve Allah. Every one of us. Allah told you as a man that you have to be grateful to your parents all the time, even when you are 80 years old. You're still a servant of your parents. And he told your wife to be grateful to you. Once she, she is married, now she has to be obedient to you, more than to her parents. The other way around, you more obedient to your parents than to your wife. If you mix it up, you or her, then you are not worshiping Allah the way he told you. So Ramadan needs a lot of fiqh. How to worship. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلَا يَرْحُثْ وَلَا يَفْسُحْ فَإِنْ سَابَّهُ أَحَدٌ أَوْ قَاتَلُهُ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي مْرِئٌ صَائِمٌ He whoever is fasting in a day of fast and there is someone who is insulting him or accusing him or try to fight with him, they let him to say, raise his voice and say, إِنِّي صَائِمٌ I am fasting. This is in Ramadan and in other than Ramadan. You should hide your fast, except in this case. You should always hide your fast which is outside Ramadan. You should not let people know that you are fasting. But if one wants to fight with you or try to accuse you or insult you, then you say to him, Enni Sa'im. That's crucial. Most of the Even can. Even Kaab, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ahad, anybody, anybody. Why? Because I'm now, I'm in a situation where I'm very pure. I don't go to this dirt, on dirty level. I don't go down. I'm this high. As we earlier said, when you are fasting, you have similarity with what? With the angels. This guy who is trying to yani, accuse you or uh, uh, insult you, he's having a character of what? Of the shayateen. So you don't go to that level when Allah raised you to this level. You don't go down to that level when Allah Ta'ala have elevated you to that level. You be there and continue. And continue. So this is fasting. This is fasting. When you are fasting, you need to learn how to start your fast, how to finish it. And Rasulullah already told us, many people today, they don't fast the way Rasulullah told them. And that will make them lose some reward. And make them put themselves in so, some sort of trouble in this dunya. How? He وسلم, said, Take the meal of sahur as there is barakah in it. And he told us when to take the sahur and what to take in sahur. He told us. So when you do sahur, when you take sahur, and when you take what Rasulullah told you to take, and when you take it at the time he told you to take, then believe me, you're going to earn huge hasanat and 
benefit of dunya in your body. Isa Salam said, Tasahar of Inna Sahuri Barak. Take this meal of Sahur as there is a Barak in it. Now, when, when we Isa when Salam says Barak, it means what? It means to your body. Because you are taking meal, and Isa Salam telling you that there is Baraka. So when you take this meal, you will have Baraka in your body. It means you are going to have a good day, strong in body, feeling no hunger, no thirst. And you can go warm and strong. But if you don't take this meal, you are going to be a bit, you lose the reward and you lose some of the strength. Now, when and what? When he saw Salem said, لا تزال أمتي بخير ما عجل الفطرة وأخر السعود. He saw Salem said, my ummah will continue to be upon goodness as long as they break the past as soon as the sun sets. They don't wait. Some people they say, no, no, no. Maybe we now break it while still, while, and they can see the sun disappear. The sun disappeared, not the night appear. The sun disappeared. Because when the sun disappears, still there is light. So it is not the disappearance of the light and the appearance of the darkness. La. It is the disappearance of the sun, of the sun. Yeah. So he saw a sallam said, delay the sahur. Up to when? He, uh, Sahabi said, we, we had the sahur meal with Rasulullah one day. And then we went for salah. The, the tabi'in asked him, how long was there between the time you had your suhoor and Salatul Fajr. He said it's just like when you recite 40 ayat. 40 ayat. He didn't say long surah or short surah. This approximately to be from 10 to maximum 15 minutes. It doesn't go to 15, but let's say before Fajr. Why? This is the time in which Allah Ta'ala descends to the first layer of heavens and say, هَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَخْبِرٍ فَأَغْبِرْ لَهُ هَلْ مِنْ تَائِبٍ فَأَتُوبْ عَلَيْهِ هَلْ مِنْ سَائِرٍ فَأَغْبِرْ Is there anyone who is seeking for forgiveness so I forgive him? Is there anyone who is repenting so I accept his repentance? Is there anyone who asks anything so I give it to him? So it is the time in which Allah Ta'ala come closer to you and He wants you to be in this position. But you are sleeping. That's not good. So when you are taking this meal, you do dhikr. And then you stop like 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes before salah or before the adhan. What do you do in this time? Do dhikr. Do istighfar. Do dua. Because Allah Ta'ala likes that from you until the Adhan is raised. What to take on your sahur? It's not yani, necessary to be a big meal. You can make your iftar medium, or first of all, the sunnah is to make only date or water before salah. Pray and after salah eat what you want, some musa, bread, uh, rice, barbecue, but not before salah, not like what people are doing today. And they insist, they hear this hadith, but they insist, they insist, and they bring to the masjid all type of food. Not like it in Medina. Medina back home, nobody is allowed to bring in the masjid except dates, coffee, tea and yogurt, yogurt and bread, yogurt. And they eat that and they stay there in the masjid until Taraweeh finishes. Then they go home and eat. That is the best way 
If you ask all medicine doctors, they will tell you that. But Rasulullah told you that centuries ago. He told you that. He saw Salam used, as Aisha said, he used to take fresh dates. If he doesn't, find them uh, red dates. If he doesn't, then some water. And then he goes to Salah and he doesn't delay Maghrib like people do today. Normally, people call Iqama uh, of Maghrib 10 minutes after Adhan or 5 minutes some places. In Ramadan, they give it 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Why? Oh, we need to eat. La akhi. You did not to eat, need to eat all this time from Fajr until now. Now for 5 minutes, 10 minutes praying. You cannot wait. You cannot wait. Let us pray and then go eat. And then go eat. Wallahi akhwan, my father is a little. He never learned. He never read or write. Wallahi akhwan, he never ever eat anything before salah other than the dates and water. He goes to the masjid before Maghrib, carrying with him his zamzam butter and his dates. And he goes where? All the people put the dates and water or whatever at the back. He doesn't sit with them. Why? He wants to be in the first row behind the Imam. A man who never studied, never learned, never write, never read. But the fitra, he hear this hadith, khalas, stick. Stick to it. Today, we lecture thousands of times of this hadith. Yet, Jazakallah khair, Shaykh, MashaAllah, it was wonderful talk. Yalla, yalla, ikhwan, yalla, the food there. SubhanAllah, what we said now? What we said? Take one date and stay here. Don't lose the first row. And then the Iqama calls. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming, some more, some more, there. It's not good. It's not good. You're not going to hold up eating now. Now it is the time when you are going to eat all night. You're doing that like if you are going to stop eating. So just to yani, take some what breaks the fast. And then pray Maghrib. After that you go take a light meal, not heavy. A light meal. And then rest some time. Take shower if you can. Then go to Salatul Isha and Tarawiyah. Pray with the Jama'ah. When you have this small meal, medium meal, you're not bothered in Salah. If you dump lots of food in your body, in the Salah, even your neighbors are not yani, getting tranquility because you are moving. The food jumped here and there. You're trying to move it. That's not good. You eat a small meal after uh, Salat al-Maghrib, small meal, soup, one, two, samosa. That's enough. Enough. And then pray Taraweeh. Then go eat the big meal. Eat the big meal. Then rest. And before Fajr, like as we said, 20 minutes before Fajr, wake up, take some dates, some water, stay making dhikr and dua. Try this. This is not my plan. This is what Rasulullah said, Ya And what he used to do. Try it and see. Wallahi, this Ramadan will be so different, so beautiful. So different, so beautiful. And I guarantee if you go like that, after Ramadan, you don't want to stop fasting. Especially now, you are in the summer. You are doing 18 hours fast. So why in the winter you can't? When you are doing only 6, 8 hours. Because in the winter, they go short. 
So if you're from now, exercise it this way, you will find that after Ramadan you want to continue fasting, and when the winter comes, maybe you fast all the winter. Because it's easy, simple for you. You done the exercise properly. So this is Ramadan and fasting. Ramadan and night prayers. Many of us don't understand the purpose of night prayers. Some of us think that night prayers is just to go for um, the nice voice and nice recitation, which is not the purpose for night prayers. Night prayer, the purpose of it is to free your mind, focus in what is read and said. If you are not Arab, you cannot cope with the wording. But you know that the Imam today is going to read from this portion to this portion. Through the day, read the translation of the, of the interpretation of it. It helps you in understanding. It helps you in living the Quran while listening to it from the Imam. Night prayers, most of the Muslims today, they come for night prayers, you know, for what? For the dua. I just want anybody to show me where it is said that Rasulullah did dua in night prayer. Just show me one. He led the jama'ah in Ramadan three nights. No sahabi said that he did dua. I don't mean that it's not allowed. No, it's allowed because he taught al Hassan ibn Ali to say certain words in dua of the night prayer. But why we go for this long dua? Why? And then we recite the dua the way we recite the Quran. And then we raise our voices and lower it in a way, yani, uh, uh, yani, drags the emotions of the listeners, making them cry. They are not crying for the wording, they are crying for the rhythm. That's, that's, that's wrong, ya that's wrong. We come to pray. We come to get the uh, affection from the recitation of the Quran. Not, not the dua. The dua is wording made by the Imam. The Quran is the speech of Allah. Speech of Allah. If we can't get uh, yani emotionally affected with the words of Allah, then how come we get affected with the words of the Imam? Mm. Then there is something wrong in our Iman, and something wrong in our understanding. So we come to the night prayer willing to listen to the Quran, not to the voice of the Imam. Yes, it is good to have yani, the Imam with good voice, but we don't hire an Imam other than our regular Imam because, oh, his voice is nice. La it's not like that. It's not like that. But if the Imam needs someone to help him, no problem. But what most of the Masajid do these days, is not like that. I receive many calls. Please find us an Imam with voice, nice voice. Sahih, the Prophet did not say that Ya Ummul Qawm Ahsanahum Sawta. He did not say that the Imam of the people is the one who has the best voice, uh, voice amongst them. No. It's related to the uh, memorizing the Quran and the fiqh. One who has fiqh. That is how we need to understand the night prayers. There is Sunnah of the Prophet before the night prayer start. Most of the people don't know and they don't do. And there is sunnah after it. Most of the people don't know and don't do. It is not they don't know because no one told them. Because they are ignoring it. 
Otherwise, every Ramadan, the du'at and the khutbah, they speak about it. Rasulullah used to do two light rak'at before Salat al Two light rak'at. And that's why Ibn Abbas said he used to pray 13 rak'at. With these two light rak'at before Salat al And light means light. There are two light rak'at before Maghrib, between Adhan and Iqamah of Maghrib. And two light rak'at before Qiyam al whether it is Taraweeh or Tahajjud, whatever it is. Two light rak'at. What is the light rak'at? Light by the meaning of light. Yani, Surah al Fatiha, and then you go, Subhan Rabbi al just three times and raise up, go for sujood, Subhan Rabbi al just three times and yani, very light. Not as the rawatib, not as what you do in Salat al Duha, not as what you do in. No, but it's very short, very light. No? That is Sunnah. And then, once you finish Salat al once you finish the Taraweeh with the Imam, and you make the Salam of the last Raka'ah, it's from the Sunnah to say Subhan al Malik al Quddus, Subhan al Malik al Quddus, and then you extend it, raising your voice, Subhan al Malik al Quddus. He saw Salam used to do that. A sunnah which is abundant. People don't know it or they don't do it. Many of those who know it, they feel shy to do it. They feel shy to do it. That's wrong. No shyness in worship. Allah said in Surah Al Baqarah, Inna Allah la al haq. So you must not be shy from the haq, from the truth. So this is uh, night prayers. Ramadan and prayers. What it is when you say that I'm fasting Ramadan but you don't pray? Or you delay prayers until the time of the prayer is over? Why? Because Allah, I, I am working, I'm busy. Or I am tired and I need to sleep. Or akhi. You are in jihad in this dunya. You are in jihad. Jihad with yourself. Jihad with the shaitan. Jihad with the desire. Rasulullah sallam, whose previous and future sins were forgiven as in Surah Al-Fatih. He used to stand up until his feet swollen and cracked. And Aisha, when she saw that from him, she said, Ya Rasulullah, you do that, and Allah has forgiven all of your sins? He said, wouldn't I be, or don't I like to be a grateful slave? Him, Rasulullah, long standing with concentration. And concentration doesn't come from holding the Quran. Many people today, Hold the Quran behind the Imam. Akhi, it's not a school. This is not the circle of Quran teaching Quran. La la. You are in salah. You want to learn the Quran? Come in the time when there is the circle of the Quran. But to come in salah and make it. Uh, yani, uh, yani some Imams turn the dua of Qunut to a uh, uh, yani, uh, kind of news breaking. Allahumma America, Israel, Allahumma this, Allah. This is Akhi. Not correct. Not correct. And this one, he turns it like circle of, uh, yani, then the Quran. Now, that's also not correct. That's also not correct. You are inside Taraweeh to listen, focus, concentrate, think of the ayat, live the ayat. So that it can touch your, your heart and purify it. So you need to pray. You need to pray the five time prayers. And remember, I, I like the statement came to me on a WhatsApp message, very beautiful statement. Said by someone, I forgot who. He said, your sweat that comes by 
walking from your house to the masjid for door prayer is much more valuable to Allah than your tears in the taraweeh. Why? Because that is obligatory prayer and this is optional prayer. This is optional prayer. You are so tranquil in, 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 in optional prayer, but you are so abundant to the obligatory prayer. That's wrong. That's wrong. And then we have Ramadan and Sadaqah. Ramadan is the month of Sadaqah. He, whoever, cannot be generous in Ramadan, believe me, he cannot be generous in any other time. And that's why Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Abbas said what? He said Rasulullah was the most generous mankind. And he used to be most generous in Ramadan when Jibreel comes and recites Quran with him. And that is every night. That is every night. So in Ramadan you need to be generous. Do you know what is generous? Do you know what is generosity? It's not to give the extra amount of money you have. No. It is to give from your need. That is generosity. You want to see how Rasulullah was generous? Take just two examples. Just two examples I'll give you. One, one day a woman uh, of the Sahaba knew that Rasulullah liked certain clothes, lower garment. And she made it by her hand for him. And then she sent it to Rasulullah as a gift. He liked it and he wore it. He came to the Sahaba. Once he came to the Sahaba, one of the Sahaba, very clever, he said, Ya Rasulullah, give it to me as a gift. He's wearing it. He said, give it to me. It's beautiful. Give it to me as a gift. He said, it's for you. Right then. First time he wore it. He said, it's for you. And once he finished his sitting, he went home, took it off, put on another one, and brought it to him. The Sahaba blamed the man. They said, how come you know that he doesn't have and he likes it and it came as a gift for him? How come you ask him? He said, Wallahi, I didn't want it to wear it. But because it already touched the skin of Rasulullah so I want it to be my shrouding. I wanted it to be my shrouding cloth. But see Rasulullah what he did? He gave it right away. One day he was distributing the booties when a man who is a Bedouin is from the people living in the desert, he came and embraced Islam. Rasulullah distributed the booties and he said to him, go to the valley between these two mountains and all those livestock is for you. Cows, sheep, goats, all for you. Full, the valley is full according to the Sahabi. Full. Who can give like that? The man went back to his people and he said, Oh people, you all need to accept Islam. It is better for you because I came to you now from a man who gives like he never fear poverty. That is the generosity of Rasulullah Imam Ahmad, one day he was fasting. When a miskin by Maghrib time came past by him and asked him something to break his fast. He said to him, I'm a miskin who didn't have breakfast nor lunch. Imam Ahmad is fasting. This man maybe didn't have breakfast or lunch, but maybe drank water, maybe took some sweet, maybe, maybe. But Imam Ahmad definitely didn't take anything because he's fasting. He has only one piece of, of bread that he wanted to break his fast with and have it as a dinner. He gave it to the man. He gave it to that man. Look at that. Allah Ta'ala said, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّوا You won't reach the level of piety, birth, until you spend from what you like, where your heart tells you, don't give, don't give. 
Give some. You will need it. Don't give. You know? Shaitan comes with many, many ways. Sometimes he comes to you and says, Akhi, there is someone who is in more need than him. Akhi, this man is here. How can I guarantee that I reach that man? I don't die or maybe when I reach, he's not already died. How can I guarantee? Now, I have a need now in front of me. Why would I delay? Give him. Subhanallah. Mm -hmm. So this is the month of Sadaqah. If we can't give Sadaqah in this month, Ya Ikhwan, when this ayah was descended, there was a Sahabi called Abu Talha. Abu Talha is a rich Sahabi. And you know all rich people, they have some of their wealth which is the best and the most that they like. He had a garden in Medina, the best garden in Medina. Has a well inside it called Bayruha. Rasulullah used to love coming to this well and cool down his feet in it. And it has the most fresh water in Medina and the best dates and grades of Medina. When this ayah descent was revealed and he heard it, he right away came to Rasulullah and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I hear my Lord saying such and such. And you know, Bayruha is the best garden in Medina. And it is the most thing that I love amongst my wealth. And now it is in your hand, in, in Allah's hand and in your hand. You distribute it the way you like. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, no, but go, show. Now see what the Prophet ﷺ directed to him to, something even more difficult more difficult than giving it to Rasulullah He said, go and give it to your relatives. Now, if one of us has such a, 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 a garden, and he comes to a sheikh, and the sheikh says, okay, go and distribute it to your relatives. He does. Say, hey, let them go to him. I give these people. No, 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 no. I let it uh, dry, and I don't give it to them. I'll give it to the hood, and I, give it, I don't give it to them. Why? Because he has some clashes with his relatives. Maybe brothers, maybe sisters, maybe cousins, maybe uncles, maybe aunts. Say no, no to them. Wallahi, some of them, even father and mother, he say no to them. But this Sahabi, immediately when Rasulullah said to him, go and give it to your relatives, he went. And he disappeared it, cut it, and he said, this land for you, this land for you, this land, all of it. Responding to what Allah. Why? Because they want Ajr. Abu Bakr al Siddiq, he used to have a cousin called Mistah in Medina, very poor, living him and his mother, and Abu Bakr al Siddiq sponsoring them every time. He is spending on them. When the Munafiqin spoke ill against Aisha, Mistah was one of those believers who spoke. Abu Bakr was hurt badly. That's normal. How come I help you and then you speak ill of my family? Abu Bakr said, I will never give him anything from now on. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended an ayah. Don't you like that Allah forgives you? Immediately, Abu Bakr said, yes, my Lord, I like, yes, my Lord, I like, and he went to Mustah. He gave him what he used to give him, and he had, uh, gave him more. This is how the believer deal with these verdicts. Fasting, or sorry, Ramadan, and recitation of Quran. And maybe we end up here to open uh, the session for questions. Recitation, la la, we still have the family, sorry. Recitation of Quran. Everybody knows that Ramadan is the month of Quran, is the month of recitation of Quran. You see beautiful images every Ramadan. And every masjid around the world. MashaAllah, after Fajr, people sitting reading. 
You go work. You come back door, people sitting reading. You go work. You come also people sitting reading. Until mother if they are reading. After the breakfast, they don't know the Quran. Finish. No relation with the Quran. That's wrong. Quran is to be read at night, not at the day. I don't say at the day, don't recite Quran. No, but you need to recite more at night. Why? First, Allah Ta'ala said, in Ahamim or Kitab al Mubin, Inna Anzanao fi Laylatin Mubaraka. Hamim and the clear book. Indeed, we have descended it in a blessed night. Night, night. And night begins from sunset till dawn. That is night. And that is what people abandon reading the Quran in today. Except for some. Allah Ta'ala said, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Indeed, we have descended it in the night of Al Qadr. So it is night. Look, Rasulullah Sallallahu and Jibreel, Jibreel used to come from the heavens every day in Ramadan to see Rasulullah Sallallahu but not to bring him wahid. No. It was to sit with him and both recite the Quran. When Ibn Abbas said, وَذَلِكَ كُلَّ لَيْلَةً and that is in every night. If you are doing good to recite the Quran in the day, which is really good, but don't do wrong and abandon the Quran at night. From iftar, you stop reading the Quran, you start chatting, talking, uh, texting, watching news, reading uh, WhatsApp, etc., etc. That's not good. That's not good. Now, when people tell you why we don't see you on WhatsApp, you say to them, What's up? If they don't know the answer, say, Ramadan is up. We are in Ramadan. We are not in WhatsApp. We are in Ramadan. This is Ramadan. Every single second of it has a value, has a value. We must not lose this value. We must use it wisely, wisely. So read the Quran, but also don't read many of the brothers and sisters, they read the Quran because they are competing with one another. To the limit that they do wrong with the Quran. They come, and, and I saw this, I saw this in Medina, they ask each other, Oh, where, where did you reach? Oh, I reached uh, the Port Jizu. Oh, Port Jizu, I'm still in the chair. He go. This is not Quran. This is not reading Quran. This is kidding. This is sinning. You know what is this? This is Quran, the speech of Allah. The speech of Allah. You want to uh, do more than him? Stay awake longer hours than him. Recite. Use it all in recitation. You will finish before him. And other thing, when the brothers yani, recite the Quran, all their aim is to do one, two, three times of finishing the Quran in Ramadan. No, Akhi, that is not, that is not a goal. That is not a goal. The goal is how much you learn. You recite the Quran ten times in Ramadan. Okay? Ten times. Now, how many times you pass by the eye of riba? Ya riba. How many times? Ten times. Did you stop eating riba? You're still going for mortgage. You're still dealing with riba. What does this recitation benefit you now? You recite. Am hasibtum. Am hasibtum ida 
أن تقطعوا أرحامكم You pass by this ayah where Allah Ta'ala says, do you think that when you get يعني, the power, you go and destroy on the earth and break your kinships? And you're still breaking your kinship. You're still breaking your kinship. So what is the benefit of reciting the Quran ten times? You recite the Quran to act upon it. Not to compete with others with it. No. It's to act upon it. It's to act upon it. It is not important how many times you recite the Quran in Ramadan. Even if you can't finish one time. But what you read, you act upon. That is the real benefit. That is the real benefit. Some recite the Quran and say, okay, I send the reward for my descent, this is uh, father or mother or Akhi, this is wrong. This is wrong. Do it for yourself in a proper way and make dua for your father or mother or any deceased body. Make dua. Because dua is better for them than anything that you do. Anything. Better than your umrah, better than your hajj that you do for them. Better than the sadaqah that you do for them. Better. As the Prophet said, إذا مات ابن آدم انقطع عمله إلا من ثلاث. When the son of Adam dies, human dies, then all of his deeds are cut except from three things. From them what? ولد صالح يدعو له. A pious child that makes dua, not makes tawab, not makes umrah, not makes hajj, not gives sadaqa on his behalf. لا. Making dua for him. Making dua for him. And that's why you don't see any Sahabi who did Hajj or Umrah on behalf of his dead father or mother. Or. Unless he is someone who never performed the obligatory Hajj, like Shubhrama. Who Rasulullah heard him saying, Labbaik Allahumma uh, and Shubhrama. He asked him, Who is Shubhrama? He said, He's my cousin. Died before doing Hajj, the obligatory Hajj. He said, have you done it for yourself? He said, no, he said, go do it for yourself and then do it for Shubhrama. But the optional ones, no one has done it for no one, from the Sahaba. From the Sahaba, no one has done it for no one. What they used to do, what Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in this Hadith, Dua for them. وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا That's what Allah Ta'ala is telling us. رَبِّ غْبِلْنِي وَلِوَالِدَيْهِ That's what Allah Ta'ala taught us in the Quran. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to make dua for our deceased parents. The family, Ramadan and the family. Once Ramadan comes, the husband or Yani every male member in the family, mashallah, have spare time to read the Quran, to go to the masjid. But the mother and the sister and the wife, no. Why? They are busy working in the kitchen. Ramadan is the month that the woman works in the kitchen more than any time in the year. She works long hours. She serves like an open buffet. There are maybe two, three members or four, five members in the family. And mashallah, different dishes. Why? Why? Did Allah Ta'ala give us Ramadan to eat? Is it a month of eating or month of fasting? Don't you know the difference between fasting and eating? So, let your wife let your mother, let your sister, let your daughter have their time to recite the Quran, to do the dhikr, to yani, have some rest in the day so, so that they can pray at night. Don't let your mom, your wife, your daughter always say, oh, Ramadan is terrible, 
Ramadan is tired. I'm tired in Ramadan. All the time I'm standing in the kitchen. That's wrong, Akhi. Tell your wife, stop, we don't want. You can do one dish and you can do it for two, three days. We have a fridge. Put it and every day we eat some of it. Alhamdulillah. Finish. But you, my wife, you, my daughter, you, my mom, you need to sit and read the Quran. You need to sit and do dhikr. You need to sit. You need to rest sometime in the day so in the night you can stand up for night prayer. <coughs> That's how we need to do. We Muslims are turning Ramadan like there are meals and some sort of uh, food and drinks that is that appears only Ramadan. Anyway, only Ramadan. Oh, this is and, and if you, if you are served this meal, this food in other than Ramadan, you say Subhanallah. You remind me of Ramadan. Subhanallah. Who said that there is a special food for Ramadan? Who said that Ramadan is for special food or Ramadan is for eating? Nah. Ramadan is for worship. Ramadan is the month of worshippers. Not war, war, month of kitcheners. It's month of worshippers. So we need to understand this very well. May Allah Ta'ala make us from those who listen to the hub and follow the best of it, and may Allah Ta'ala increase our Iman in this month, and make us in this month better than us before it, and make us after it better than us uh, in it. Wallahu a'lam, wa sallallahu ala nabiyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi, and as we promised, uh, we have some uh, time for uh, question and answers if you have any. I lost the question of nobody else knows. Else. Two, I just want to ask you about, you know, Malik al Kadus. When you when you actually say that, is it uh, after the Tarawih prayer? Or, I didn't quite hear that. Before. Yes, right um, after the salam of the last rak'ah. Right. He says, Subhan al Malik al Kadus. Right. Subhan al Malik al Kadus. And then the third, raise your voice and say, Subhan al Malik al Kadus. Just uh, two. I mean, huh? you come from the land of Tawheed, so it's a bit strange where all the ulama are that nobody's advice the people who recite Quran in Tawheed about the dua. <coughs> they do. Uh, they do advise them. They do advise, not only advise. Okay. They do even command them, but they do listen. Okay. Those imams follow the masses. The masses like that. And the last question is raising the hands in the, you know, well, in the dua. Is that... Is that obligatory or is that? It's not obligatory, but it is from the etiquette of dua. From the etiquette in of dua in any time. I hear some any... people say it's not. Uh... No, no, it is because who, yani, okay. Rasulullah sallallahu said that Inna Allah istahi ida Allah indeed uh, uh, is shy to uh, let the slave who extend his hands towards him to have them back uh, near. I know this narration. Okay. Yeah. What, what can exempt the dua of Taraweeh from this? Okay, but would you be able to check for me just in case? Because I heard. No, I know, I know the statement of Sheikh Albani and even Sheikh Al Mukbin. But what is the uh, rule to exempt? They the say they say it is not uh, uh, reported that the Sahaba used to raise. Okay, maybe, maybe they used to, maybe not. There are something and there are certain things which did not any yani, uh, convey to us Allah. But we stick to the original. The, what the Rasul said. Now. I think what Nasser is saying, man, you know, the Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Kudus is after the Witter prayer, not after the Witter prayer. Yeah, the Witter. Yeah, it's after the Witter prayer, not between the four. No, no, like I said Witter. last Raka. Yes, I'm just making sure here. Last Raka the must be the Witter. Yes. Yeah.
in Abel. Subhanak Allah, Muhammadik, and Shadu Allah, Ilaha 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 Ant, Mr. Firuqa Atubuni. Guys, you look all very hungry, and you want to go for a lot of preparing. Otherwise, I don't think that you have no questions. Because uh, in a short while, everybody cuts me aside. Oh, I have a question. <laughs> but that time he was, uh, you know, in Haripur. Khair, inshaAllah. Jazakum Allah khair. Barakallahu alaykum.